Okay, go ahead and get Epic Games Launcher, go in Unreal, install an engine. Oop, uh, make that 5.61 like you see here. And then under Launch, you have Options. And make sure you select what you see here, in particular, the MetaHuman Creator Core Data. That's the key. I'm running this on Windows. That's that. Okay, then you'll go ahead and launch it. This is just to say that you can launch um, any project. I just did a blank one. And then just go into uh, Edit Plugins. Search on Live Link. And you'll have you should have Live Link there. And then search on MetaHuman. And um, what you need is MetaHuman Creator and um, CoreTech. And the uh, MetaHuman Live Link, this is uh, for older MetaHumans. If you're using new ones, don't need it. So select these and you will need to restart to install these plugins. It's installed, back to our project here. If we, uh, if we go in and create a new level, And then in the content, we go ahead and we have a MetaHuman option. Go ahead and create a MetaHuman character. Call this, uh, and then double click that. Uh, enable missing. And then here we go. Um, we are in MetaHuman Creator in Unreal. You don't have to go to the browser anymore. So this is awesome. Let me go over to presets. Always just enable missing. And then we see all the the new uh, MetaHuman presets. So we will just uh, pick somebody out of here. And after this is done, we will go ahead and restart to apply new settings. Uh, we have our MetaHuman and you did any tweaking you wanted with the, the million options you have. It's pretty awesome. Come over to this assemble. You'll see characters not rigged. So go up here and create full rig. Uh, let's see if you log on for that. Just wait for auto rigging to finish. Uh, so now we see that's in complete. And now it says the, the character is missing texture. So go ahead and download the texture source. You can do this in different resolutions. Let's do 2K. Okay, so that is done. Now I just clicked away and clicked back to assemble to get the green assemble. And then there's some options as far as the um, cinematic complete, optimize. I'm going to try optimize this time. And then, uh, you know, others for UEFN and TCC export if you're doing like Mayan Blender type stuff. So let's try optimized. And then hit assemble. This is going to assemble our character and pop it in our content drawer. Now we're actually, for our usage, just staying in MetaHuman Creator. So we probably don't even need to do this. But if you want to use it in an actual scene, you just drag it in the scene and use it. So in our level. We see the MetaHumans directory now in our AI MetaHuman. And then here's our character that we just made. Drag it onto the scene. And we can use it in our level from there.
but let's pop back to the meta human creator because that's where we're actually going to human i just went in and did um some tweaking as far as the um the background i turned to black uh because that works better with the hologram even though there's still a bit of a lighting glow i'll probably work on that some more uh and then turn off this you know informational display and so we have our meta human now we'll go over to live link hub um to do the receiving of the audio that will act as um, audio to face did before in order to animate the metahuman. And then I'll also show live link for um, when you use live link on your phone, there's two ways of animating the metahuman. So to get over to live link hub, you actually um, go into the tools menu, but you have to be on a level to get the right tools menu to find live link hub. So that just noting again, that I'm doing all this actually in metahuman creator. This is not in an actual level or app, uh, but to get to live link hub, um, you go to, you search here, it will pop up. So anyway, click on that and it'll bring up this live link hub, which is a separate process by the way. And then here we have our sources. So this is a pretty cool one-stop shop. You have all these different sources to do our metahuman audio. Again, this simulates audio to face click. Uh, MetaHuman Audio to add that source, and then it'll give you this um, these options down here. Select a input, and I'm going to get more into these inputs as far as using a virtual input, um, and then also using inputs if you're on a cloud machine and you only have virtual mics and things like that. But the basics is you'll pick your mic here, your sound your sound input source, um, and then give it a, a subject name and hit connect. So I give my subject name uh, test. And then, um, you know, you'll have this here and it'll be green if it's active and good. And you'll see this level when you go to test it. So we, we could run some audio through here real quickly, but I'll show you a live example. Um, so for example, you know, you could use uh, just the media player or whatever. So that's it. And then um, over back on the MetaHuman Creator side, in the animation controller, you select Live Link and then you select your source. So that's that test source that I made. And then whenever you play audio, it's going to play it through. Okay, so you have, I'll just show you a quick test here. Okay. Okay, just a very quick test. Now, uh, I should explain, there is a delay of a little less than a second between the sound and the animation. Um, so the animation comes a little bit before the sound and I'm also, what you're hearing is actually a Twitch stream. So, um, this works, you know, with zoom or Twitch stream or whatever. And so you can see that in action. I'll actually go over to the Twitch stream to show the application. So this application here is, is it backed by a Java application that will play answers to your responses. So we can do things like this. Um, what are some spatial features in the Oracle database? Pop over the Twitch. On it. Oracle Spatial supports JSON, GeoJSON, 3D objects, vector tiles, geocoding, and advanced spatial indexing for efficient data management. Okay. So uh, I'm just demonstrating the fact that it's working and uh, with the um, audio file that was generated from that, you know, that AI query there. So back to our machine, let's now look at live link with the um, phone application. So if we just go ahead and um, we have our source here for live link face, and that's this iPhone here. And that turns green because my phone is now, you know, as soon as I lift the phone to my face with the live link app on it and it does the mesh then it shows active right so if these aren't green um it can be just because they're not active with sound you know you, you don't have the connection because there's no activity so if we go back to the metahuman creator the um you have to select the subject right that's one thing you have to go back and forth on this so in the old application you could do it via the app that's the you know the one kind of thing we have to do now is to actually make that change on here so my phone, this is my phone here, and then you can see this is mirroring me off the phone and doing the whole live link thing, the mirror me feature as we call it, okay? So that's it, and then you can set it back, obviously, to stream. Um, I'm gonna look into seeing, the runtime is probably coming fairly soon, and then um, can either switch it in there or find a way through API to switch it here. 
but until then it's just a matter of you know selecting your source um, so that's about it let me show you a little bit about the setup as far as these inputs so back here at, at voice meter or back here at the live link hub i should say we have our audio devices like i mentioned and what you do here if you to make this all work is download um, either a VB cable or a more powerful is a voice meter potato and the thing the voice uh, the voice meter potato will give you is multiple cables as you can see over here you get multiple ins and outs and so that is good uh, because then we can set it up so that we get the one input which is the you know either the microphone or the audio file you're playing or the streaming whatever it is as far as your source and you can send it to two outputs so you can send it to live link hub and then send the second output to the actual speaker and add a um, delay as you can see the button here I, should, I don't have the app on right now but there's a button right here that has says delay so you select uh, you have your input you select the two outputs and then you select a delay of less than one second for the, the other one. So you could do it that way or you could just have something on the client machine that's listening, of course, uh, that's doing a delay on the sound to the speakers there. So that's how you can kind of, you know, um, sync up the animation with the voice. So that's about it. The other thing I'm just going to talk about quickly is that um, if you are running this on a compute instance in the cloud, you probably don't have a microphone. And um, so what you have to do is wire up a virtual microphone. So the first thing you have to do is in your remote desktop setup, you have to enable um, the playing of sound on the remote PC and you know enable all this redirect, but uh, have the sound play on the remote PC. And the, the real significance of that is that it allows um, uh, the enabling of those devices, of the virtual devices on the remote machine. Otherwise, Windows won't. Um, try and enable them. Um, so that will give you the ability to add a virtual microphone, which you won't be able to have. The other thing you want to do is in the sound settings. So now in Windows, this is two separate sections. This is your Windows sound. And I'll go over that first, actually. You want to set the sound um, either at the default level or override it um, at the custom level. And you can do that by going into the volumes and then down here, app volume and device preferences. And this will list it for each app. So this is useful. You know, this is the application that I was just playing. That's the Java app, um, the Windows app. If you want somebody on a Zoom meeting to be able to control it, then put this up. If not, put it down, um, that type of thing. Or, you know, select uh, where it's coming in and out of the different source. So that's what you're doing here. And then over here, this is the actual um, system sound settings, which is different. Um, when you come in here uh, you, and you select the cable and then you select properties, uh, you want to make sure that this uh, listen does not have listen to this device because you'll get in a infinite looping echo. OK, so you need to make sure that's disabled. Um, and that's about it, I think. So these are these are only aspects that I mentioned if you're running on a virtual instance in the cloud. And I think that's about it. Um, anything else is our topics that are in the blog already as far as setting this up, um, you know, as far as setting up Unreal and all of this, um, the other Windows settings. Um, and if there's anything missing, they are in the blog. So that's about it, I think.